Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this section, we're going to look at solving polynomial inequalities. Those are simply inequalities that have polynomials on one or both sides of the inequality. And the method I'm going to show you in this video is a little bit different from the one in the other videos and in the ebook. It's an alternative approach. The approach that I want to show you avoids the use of what are called test numbers or test points, and that is the primary advantage. But I want you to watch this video and compare it with the others, and then you get to decide for yourself which method makes the most sense for you. You will not hurt my feelings if you choose the other method. Let's jump right in. I have some examples I want to show you, and I'll use the examples to illustrate uh, the steps involved in this particular process. So suppose we want to, in example one, solve and graph the solution set of x squared plus 6 less than or equal to 5x. Binomial on the left, monomial on the right. So that's a polynomial inequality. Now the first step is very, very straightforward. What we simply want to do is get a zero on one side of the inequality, and we can use our idea of balance with that. Let's suppose we want to get rid of the 5x on the right. Well, it would be perfectly legal to take both sides of the equation of the inequality, subtract 5x from both sides, like this, and then the 5x minus 5x would give me a 0. And on the left side, I think I'll rearrange those terms in sort of the usual order where the degrees of the terms are decreasing. It'll look kind of more familiar that way. x squared minus 5x plus 6 is less than or equal to 0. Step 1 is done. Step 2, factor the non-zero side. So here you get to use your techniques of factoring trinomials from a little bit earlier in the course. You're thinking about seeing if you can find two numbers whose product is 6 but whose sum is negative 5. And it's actually not too hard to see that that factors very neatly as x minus 3 times x minus 2. So the inequality at this point can be rewritten as x the quantity x minus 3 times the quantity x minus 2 less than or equal to 0. And you can use the FOIL rule to check that to make sure you really get the right thing. But that's step 2 done. Now, step three is going to seem very peculiar. We have, what, it's, what it says is look at each factor that you got separately and set it greater than zero and solve the inequalities. Now, let me look back a minute. And the thing that you might immediately say is, now, wait a minute. This inequality involves something less than or equal to zero but you're saying take each factor separately and set it greater than zero. What is the point of that? Well, for a minute, I'm just going to ask you to trust me on this, and you'll see as time goes on why that's useful. So looking again, the, the two factors we had were x minus 3 and x minus 2. Take x minus 3 and set that greater than zero. Take x minus 2 and set that greater than zero and solve the inequality. That simply would mean, on the first one, add 3 to both sides, and you would have x greater than 3. And on the second one, add 2 to both sides, and you'll have x greater than 2. Next step will require some explanation. Set up a sign chart and look at the product in each interval. What we're going to do here is draw something that kind of looks like a really fancy number line but it's going to explain what we're going to do with these results from step three. So here's what I'm going to do. Each of these separate factors that I have, I'm just going to write them down one above the other. Below them, I'm going to write a number line. And I want to make sure that that number line will show the solution of both of the inequalities that I got in step two. So I need to make sure that I hit two and three. So let's suppose that I draw my number line just right here. And since I'm looking at 2 and 3, I'm going to start my number line at 0 and go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
Okay, so the two factors in the number line. Now, below the number line, write down the product of the two factors. So the idea there is you're seeing the factored form from step two down below the number line. Now, here's what we're going to do with each of these. Look at the inequality x minus 3 greater than 0 and realize that that's equivalent to x greater than 3. What that means is for all values of x that are to the right of 3, x minus 3 is positive. I'm going to represent that not by drawing a number, uh, you know, a little line segment like I usually do, but I'm just going to take some plus signs and put them above the number line, but to the right of x minus 3. And that indicates that for all values of x greater than 3, the x minus 3 factor is positive. Now, why in step 2 did we choose greater than 0, not less than 0? Well, because once you have that the where the inequality is greater than zero, you kind of get where it's less than zero for free. Less than zero would be negative. Well, if this factor is positive to the right of three, it must be negative to the left of three. So once I have the plus signs on one side, I simply have to go through and put minus signs on the other side, indicating that from three to the left, this factor is always negative. What happens at 3? If I were to plug 3 into this inequality, I'd get 3 minus 3, and that would turn out to be equal 0. Let me just put a little 0 there to show that the factor at that value of x is 0. Now let's do the same thing for x minus 2. This is up here. And again, we're going to think about where is x minus 2 positive? And it's positive whenever x is greater than 2. So what that means is next to the x minus 2, but above the number line, put little plus signs for all the values of x greater than 2, like that. And if x minus 2 is, is positive to the right of 2, it's automatically negative to the left of 2. So put little negative signs to the left. So see there, you don't have to solve x minus 3 greater than 0 and then x minus 3 less than 0. You get one of them for free. At 2, the factor would equal 0. Put a little 0 there. Now obviously you don't have to use the colors, but I kind of like green for positive, red for negative, and gold for 0. And then you might say, well, Dr. Bergdorf, this is really fun. You've made a pretty picture. What am I going to do next? Okay. Below the number line, we're going to consider what happens when we multiply the two factors together. Now, we're going to look at this one interval at a time. Imagine that I'm thinking for a moment just at the interval that is less than 2. I'll just kind of redraw over the, my number line here. If I look at any value of x in this interval here, notice from up above that that the factor x minus 3 would be negative and the factor x minus 2 would also be negative. Now what happens when you take a negative number and multiply it by another negative number? Negative times negative is positive. So what that tells you is that the product of these two factors is positive for all these numbers on the number line that are let to the left of 2. I'm going to put a bunch of little plus signs, just like that. What happens when you get to 2? Well, when x is 2, the second factor, the x minus 2, that's 0, and x minus 3 is still negative. See the little red negative sign in that area. Well, what happens if you take a negative number times 0? Oh, and anything times 0 is 0, so because there's a 0 at x equal 2, we'll just put a 0 down below for the product as well. Now, you go from interval to interval to interval. The zeros kind of define the intervals for you. So the next interval you'd have to consider would be looking between 2 and 3. And notice in there that the factor x minus 3 is negative, 
but the factor x minus 2 is now positive. So you're looking at a negative number times a positive number. A negative number times a positive number is a negative number. Put some little negative signs. I'm going to make them small because i got to fit them in a very narrow area because as soon as I get to 3, the top factor, the x minus 3, that's 0. x minus 2 is positive, but 0 times a positive number, just like 0 times a negative number, is just 0. I hope you're kind of getting the hang of that. So negative times negative is positive, negative times positive is negative, and then maybe you'll see this interval, the final interview, really quickly. Looking over here, in this part of the number line, all, excuse me, of the values of x minus 3 are positive, all the values of x minus 2 are positive, and if you take a positive number times a positive number, the result you get is a positive number. And again, at this point, you might say, well, Dr. Bergdorf, now we have an even prettier picture with lots of green plus signs and red negative signs, but what does all that mean? Now we're going to put it all together, and this is going to tell us that we can glance at this and immediately see our answer. Step five. Pick the intervals and endpoints that make the inequality from step two true. So just to make life a little bit easier, I recopied the inequality from step two, and I recopied the sign chart that we just created, so we didn't have to, don't have to go back and forth a lot. In step two, we have the inequality x minus three times x minus two is less than or equal to zero. That less than or equal to zero right there tells me that I would like the product of the two factors to either be negative or zero. Less than, less than zero is negative and equal to zero is zero. What you then do is you look at your sign chart and you look at the bottom row where you actually had the product and you say, I am looking for the place for the interval where I either have a negative product or a zero product. And guess what? That is right in here. Here it's zero, all the way through here it's negative, here it's zero. That tells you that the solution of the inequality is that little interval right there. And so my, my solution in interval notation would simply be the interval from 2 to 3, including the 2 and including the 3, because both of those values gave me a product of 0. And then if I wanted to draw that on a number line, very simply, I could actually just probably get away with leaving my sign chart number line, but if you want a nice clean one, make a number line here, and we are looking at the interval from 2 to 3, because we want to include the endpoints, we'll put square brackets there. That's the solution of the inequality. Let's do a couple more just so we get the hang of this, and I think they can go a little bit faster maybe. Solve and graph the solution set of x squared greater than 7 minus 19x. Let me review the steps. The first step is we want to get a 0 on one side. And I bet you can see this is not too hard to do. Let's say just because it, it, it's hard or, or complicated or confusing to look at a leading coefficient, a coefficient that's negative, let's suppose we subtract the 7 and add the 19x so that the 0 is on the right. I think you're probably going to be comfortable with me just going directly to here. Add 19x subtract 7. That gets a 0 on one side. Step 2. Factor the other side. Factor the non-zero side. And here we have to use the techniques and skills that we learned earlier about factoring uh, trinomials. This one does not have a leading coefficient of 1, so we have to be a little bit more clever. Uh, if we use a trial and error approach, we might do something like this. 
We believe that if that polynomial factors, it'll factor into two binomials. I'll just leave that greater than zero hanging around in there just so I remember that. And it would have to be something x plus something, something x plus something. The product of these two numbers here would have to be 6. And the product of these two numbers here would have to be negative 7. And we might have to cast about a little bit to figure out just the right combination that works. But to save a little bit of time, let's just explore whether this one does. Put a 2x plus 7 and a 3x plus negative 1. And you might remember the way I say this is to see whether this is right or not, all you have to do is check the oi, the outer and the inner product. The outer product would be negative 2x. The inner product would be 21x, negative 2x plus 21x equal 19x. That's it. That's it. That gives you the right middle term. So that factors, let me just write it a little bit cleaner here. Uh, 2x plus 7 times 3x minus 1 greater than 0. Step 3. Set each factor greater than zero. So remembering what we just had, the two factors were 2x plus 7 greater than zero and 3x minus 1 greater than zero. Uh, the first one subtracts 7 from both sides. That gives me 2x is greater than negative 7. And then divide both sides by 2. And that would give me x greater than negative 7 halves. 7 halves is 3 and a half, so that gives me an idea of where that is. Uh, 3x minus 1, the second uh, inequality, uh, add 1 to both sides. So 3x is greater than 1. Divide both uh, sides by 3. And then step 4, we create this crazy sign chart. So what do we do? We first of all write our first factor, and then below it our second factor. Below that we draw a number line, and we want to make sure that our number line hits the really important values that we got in solving the two inequalities individually. And you know what? Guess what? You don't have to work really hard on making this number line beautiful. As long as you see where those two numbers I just checked off lie relative to one another, if you don't want to mark a lot of points on that number line, you don't have to. I think you could get away with this. So you think about negative 7 halves. That's negative 3 and a half. That's clearly to the left of 1 third. What if you just make a mark right here that represents negative 7 halves, and a mark right here to the right of it that represents 1 third, and you say, you know what, I'm not going to worry about the zeros and the ones and the twos and all those things. I just have the relative position of those two. That turns out to be plenty. Because if you look at this factor here, this is saying that 2x plus 7 is positive. Greater than 0 means positive. Whenever x is to the right of negative 7 halves, so what all you really have to do is locate that 7 halves, negative 7 halves, put plus signs to the right of that. All values of x greater than negative 7 halves make the factor positive. Guess what? If all values greater than negative 7 halves make the factor positive, then all factors to the left of that make it negative. And right at negative 7 halves, you would get a 0. That simple. The second factor, same thing. Um, for all values of x greater than 1 third, 3x minus 1 is greater than 0, which means positive. So to the right of 1 third, put a bunch of little plus signs. To the left of 1 third, put a bunch of little negative signs. No particular 
reason how many positive signs or negative signs you choose, just a bunch of them, and then write at, negative, at positive one-third, rather, you have a zero. Now, to finish the sign chart, what you do is you look uh, down below that, put the product of these two factors, and look at each interval. And this can get so fast. So, if you look at the interval from all the way to the left, negative infinity, up to negative 7 halves, just kind of in here, you're looking at a negative number times a negative number. Negative times negative is positive. All positive. At negative 7 halves, a 0 times a negative is a 0. Then looking between negative 7 halves and 1 third. And notice we don't even have to look at any particular test number in these intervals like we do in the, in the other method that was shown. We simply say, hey, between negative 7 halves and 1 third, the top factor is positive, the bottom factor is negative, positive times negative is negative. Put negative signs. At 1 third, you'd have a product of 0, a positive number times 0. And then I think you can see pretty clearly to the right of 1 third, positive times positive this entire interval would be positive. Now, we should be able to see the solution of the inequality that we need from looking just at this sign chart. What you do have to do is you have to look back at the inequality from step two to see what that looked like. And just so we don't have to jump back there, I'm going to copy the results of step two right in here. It was uh, 2x plus 7 times 3x minus 1 is greater than 0. Greater than 0 means positive, but we don't want it to be equal to 0. So we would only be looking at the intervals where the product in the bottom row gave me positives. And I could state that in interval notation just like this. It would be all the numbers from negative infinity up to negative 7 halves. That's this number here on the number line. But not including negative 7 halves because we don't want this to be equal to 0, only positive. And then there's a separate interval that also gives me a positive from 1 third, again, don't include the 0, to infinity. And if I want to communicate that I want the one interval on the left together with the interval on the right, in between those, we put this symbol here, which represents the idea of union. One interval together with the other. And there you have it. That is the solution of your inequality, right there. Now, both of the examples we've seen so far can also be called quadratic inequalities uh, because the highest exponent is two. This last example, there are three factors. So that's not quadratic, but the idea is the same. Now, some of the steps that we need to do are already done. The first step is we want to have a zero on one side. Got it. The second step is we want the left side to be completely factored. Got that too. Great. So we can jump immediately to step three, where we ask ourselves, what happens when you set each one of these factors individually greater than zero and solve for x. And all of these are, I made them really easy. Add three to both sides, add two to both sides, add four to both sides. Let's see what this looks like in our sign chart. So in the sign chart, you list all the factors you have, and there may not be two, there might be three, there might be four or five or who knows what. Then draw a number line, and just make sure that that number line captures the key values you got when you solved for all these solved all these inequalities. Those are two, three, and four. So I might just have my number line go like the last one: zero, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, since I've got some space, I'll go ahead and put a six. Then I look at each one of these um, 
inequalities separately. x minus 3 is positive whenever x is greater than 3. So to the right of the x minus 3 and to the right of 3, put a whole bunch of plus signs. Anything greater than 3, that factor is positive. Automatically, everything to the left of 3 is negative. And right at 3, I didn't leave myself much space, I have 0. x minus 2. Well, that's this... Uh, uh, factor here. That's positive whenever x is greater than 2. So start at the 2 and put plus signs to the right of 2. Just like that. And if it's positive to the right of 2, then it's negative to the left of 2. So we put negative signs and a 0 right at 2. And finally, x minus 4. That's positive to the right of 4. from right in here, and therefore negative to the left of 4, like that, and right at 4, it's 0. Below that, we look at the product. Ah, kind of ran myself out of space there. And whereas before we looked at the product of three, two numbers, now we look at the product of 3. The intervals we will need will be defined by where the zeros hit. If you look to the left of 2, notice that you're multiplying a negative number times a negative number times a negative number. A negative times a negative times a negative is negative. At 2, you're going to end up with a product of 0 because one of the factors is 0. Between 2 and 3, the top factor is negative, the middle one is positive, and the bottom one is negative. If you take a negative number times a positive number times a negative number, negative times positive is negative, times another negative, that's positive. At 3, you would have 0. Between 3 and 4, you have a positive times a positive times a negative, that's negative. And then at 4, you would get a 0. And to the right of 4, you would have all positive numbers. Positive times positive times positive. That's all positive. Now, as a little hint here, if you were doing this with the test number procedure, you would have to think of test numbers between 2 and 3 and between 3 and 4. So you'd have to use test numbers that you would plug in, like 2.5 and 3.5. Not so easy. That's kind of why I like this method. No, oh, now, are we done? Well, let's see. Ultimately, what the question says is that we wanted this product to be greater than or equal to 0, positive or 0. We just look at the sign chart and we pick the intervals that either give me a plus sign or a zero. And I can see that really clearly. It would be between two and three, including both the two and the three. And then union the interval from four to infinity, including the four. And that's the solution of that inequality. So I hope you're like this alternative approach. It's a different way to look at uh, polynomial inequalities. Try both if you like. Pick the one that's best for you. Take care.